Hello, Photopillar, Rafael Navarra here. With an expected peak of intensity with more than 100 meters per hour, the Geminids is one of the most spectacular and most powerful meteor showers. It's visible in both the northern and the southern hemisphere, and in 2020, the conditions will be amazing. You can't miss it. The peak is expected to occur during the night that goes from the December 13th to December 14th. This is around new moon, so without moon, the show looks promising. I hope that the weather cooperates too, fingers crossed. Well, in this video I'll show you how to plan any photo of the Geminids meteor shower you imagine, step by step. So you make sure that you are at the right place, at the right time, to enjoy the show and to take the best photo possible. Ah, and this workflow works for 2021 and 2022 or any other year and any other meteor shower. Ready? Let's dive in. Go to photo pills. And here in the pills menu, you can use the meteor shower pill to figure out really quickly all the key information of the Gemini's meteor shower for the location you are. There are cool things you can do here, but I'm not going to explain it in today's video. If you want to see me using the meteor shower pill, please watch this video. And there I plan the first meteor shower. You have everything you need in this video. Watch it. Today, I want to focus on how to use the planner because with the planner you can plan any photo of any meteor shower for any location you want okay let me show you how it works the first thing you need to do is to place the red pin you see on the map on the location you wish to plan the photo choose a location with uh, little light pollution or no light pollution at all like for example turret arch a cool natural arch located in the arches national park in Utah, USA. Let's do it. Let's plan a photo of the Geminids meteor shower with the turret arch. To do it, just tap on load and type turret arch, arch in the search bar. Here we are. And tap on the result. And the red pin will be placed next to a turret arch, this amazing and beautiful natural arch. The next step is to set the Geminids, to choose the Geminids in this case. To do it, tap on the Max Settings button. And then here in the Map Layers, first turn off the Sun layer. Tap on the eye next to the Sun layer, because I don't really need the Sun to plan a Meteor Shower. And then tap on Meteor Shower to access the 2020 calendar. Here you can swipe right or left. To change the year. On the calendar you find all the meteor showers including all the key information. The period of activity, the peak date, the peak time and the meteors per hour at the peak and also the moon phase at the peak which is super important because the moon really affects the quality of the meteor shower. The blue energy bar you see tells you how powerful, how cool a meteor shower will be. The fullest, the better. So in 2020, looking at the calendar, I can conclude that the best meteor showers are the Quadrantids, uh, the Lilids, so so, the Perseids, and the Geminids. We're planning the Geminids here, so tap on Geminids to select it and go back to the map. And now swipe the top panel to the left until you get to the meteor showers panel. This one. Let's move on. Now the planner gives you all the meteor shower info you need to plan the shot. On the top panel you have the local peak time, this is the peak time for the red pin position, which happens on December 14th at 12.18 am and the expected meteors per hour is 100.6, so around 100 meteors per hour are expected at the peak. Notice that the time bar has been set to the peak daytime time. Again, this is December 14th, 2020 at 12.18 a.m. Also, on the time bar, what you see is the horizon here in the middle, this line in the middle. You also have the moon path and the path of the radiant of the meteor shower, the radiant point. And on the map, you also have the position and path of the radiant and also the moon info, the moon rise and moon set directions and the moon position for the selected date and time. But what's the radiant? What's the radiant of a meteor shower? What's the radiant point of a meteor shower? Well, the radiant point, the radiant of a meteor shower is that the spot in the sky where meteors originate. Knowing where the radiant is at all time is key to plan the shot. If you go and place yourself right where the red pin is and tap on the night AR button, you'll be able to visualize the radiant in the sky. This is the horizon. And let's look, let's look for the radiant of the Gemini. Here it is. 
and here you have the date and time. And this is the position of the radiant seen from the repping position at the time and the date of the peak maximum intensity of meteors. You can swipe from right to left to move time forwards so you can really visualize where the radiant will be at all time. You can swipe the, your, uh, the screen from uh, left to right to move time backwards and see where the radiant will be at the beginning of the uh, shooting, at the beginning of the session, even when the radiant will become visible above the horizon. Yeah, I love the night AR, it's pretty cool. You have the midi shower info and also the Milky Way info, so you know where the Milky Way is, and the star pills info also. These circles tell you the star pills pattern, pattern you'll get when shooting in a certain direction. Cool, but we're talking about meteor showers today, so use the AR, night AR view to visualize where the radio will be at all time when you're on the location. As I said, knowing the exact location of the radiant at all time is key when planning a photo of a meteor shower. If you wish to capture long meteors, what you have to do is to frame your camera away from the radiant. My friend Arlene Wallace actually suggests to frame the camera for longer meteors around 40-50 degrees away from the radiant point. And if you wish to create an image like this one, where all the meteors appear to converge in one spot in the sky, you can use the technique Ian Norman explains in this video. Watch it, it's a great, great masterclass on how to photograph the Perseids and you can apply the same principles to the Geminids. Well, going back to our example, to turret arch, on the time bar, you also have a graph that represents the intensity of meteors throughout time. If I swipe the time bar to change time, you'll see both on the top panel and on the time bar with this graph, how the intensity of meteor changes throughout time. This helps you to understand when to start the shooting, when to start the session and when to stop. For example, in this case, I would start around 7 p.m. or less, and the intensity of meteors is around 28.6, 28 meters per hour. Then the intensity goes up as the radiant goes up too until the peak time and then goes down again until it becomes daytime the light of the sun starts to invade the scene around 6 a.m. so for the Geminids I recommend you to start shooting here in this location from 7 p.m. till 6 a.m. more or less it's no secret that the more photos you take the longer you stay shooting the more meteors you'll capture so get ready to spend the whole night shooting you'll have no moon and it will be amazing. Great, now I have my shooting time. I'll start at 7 p.m. until 6 a.m., more or less. Let's find out, let's figure out the shooting spot. Notice that when I swipe the time bar to change the time, the position of the radiant changes also on the map. The radiant moves along its path, so I know where the radiant is at all time. Given the position of the natural arch and given the position of the radiant around the peak, I think this spot over here could be, or can be, and I think it is a great shooting spot uh, right here. Because I have a great view of my subject, the turret arch, and the radiant will move above my subject, the natural arch, from 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. more or less. And then during the second half of the shooting, the radiant will move away from my subject, from my framing. So I'll be able to frame the radiant at the beginning of the shooting and then it'll move away backwards. It will be at my back, which will allow me, if I'm lucky, to capture longer meteors. I like it, I like it, I like this spot. Great, now that I know the shooting spot, shooting date and shooting time, I can plan another thing. Let's plan the field of view the focal length I want to use, or I need to use, to get the framing I want. To do it, just tap on the Map Settings button, and on the Map Tools, tap on FOV, Field of View, and go back to the map. And here, the next step is to introduce your camera. In this case, I'm using Antoni's camera, which is the Nikon Z6, and introduce the focal length. Let's introduce, for example, let's see what happens with the 24 millimeters 
Now on the map you see the field of view you'll get, the framing you'll get, what will be in the frame and what will be outside the frame. Next step is to set the focus distance, the subject distance. But before, I recommend you to go to the black pin panel, go to panel number two, and tap on the button here, a black pin will appear, and place that this black pin on your subject. And now, tap on the subject distance, so focus distance, and set black pin, black pin distance. This way, you're telling Photopills you're focusing at your subject, at the black pin, which is at 56.1 uh, meters. Okay, choose to shoot in landscape, for example, and now tap on the framing direction here and choose align with black pin. And the field of view will be aligned or centered with the black pin, your subject. Cool. You can also change the shooting direction from the map by dragging this black circle you see here on the map. And you can really adjust the framing you want. I think I'll use a shorter focal length. So let's introduce, for example, a 14 millimeters and see the difference. Yes, 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 yes. I think I like it better because I can include more of my subject, of the whole subject, the whole stone structure, the natural arch, and also I include more sky. The shorter the focal length, the more sky will be captured in the frame and also more meteors will be captured, hopefully. Fantastic, I think I'm done with the planning. I know my shooting spot, shooting date and time, shooting direction, I know my focal length, I know everything. The final step is to save the plan and also add an alert to my calendar so I make sure I don't miss the shot. Let's do it. To save the plan, tap on save, tap on save plan, new plan and add a name, Geminids. Oops, Jamie needs 2020 direct arch. Oops, arch. Save and tap on done. We go back to the map and to add an alert, to add it to the calendar, tap on more here, action. And here you can do many things. You can send the plan to a friend via email, for example, and also you can add an alert to your calendar. Do it, don't miss the shot. Easy, easy, easy. And this is how you can easily plan any photo of the Geminids meteor shower you imagine. No matter the location, you can plan it. Go for it. As always, if you have a question, leave a comment below. And if you wish to learn how to photograph meteor showers, I'm also leaving a link in the description of this video to our super detailed Meteor Shower Guy. Check it out. And if you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, and click on the bell to get a notification when we release the next video. And remember that you have the power to imagine, plan, and shoot legendary photos. Bye.